The Rolly Flex is one of the most iconic cameras of all time. And the most popular series of twin lens reflex, 6x6 options over the last century. I recently borrowed my friend's Rolly Flex 3.5 to try one out for the first time and see what it was all about. The appeal of a TLR comes from its relatively compact size for a medium format camera. It means you can shoot 6x6 frames on 120 film, giving you amazing quality on the go. It employs compact built-in lenses and a waist level viewfinder. One lens for viewing and the other for exposing the film. But is the popularity of the Rolly Flex warranted? And how does it compare to something like this much cheaper Yashica Flex? How does it feel to use one for a variety of purposes, including street photography? I'll be covering all that in this video. It's hard to talk about the Rolly Flex without mentioning photographers like Vivian Meyer and her prolific body of work using the system. She was able to seemingly blend into the world and finesse the full potential of this system out on the streets. So of course, one of the first things I wanted to try as a big fan of her work was some street photography. Using the camera and loading the film is fairly easy. The viewfinder isn't overly bright, but it's functional and upgrade options are available. So I hit the streets of Melbourne using films like Ilford HP 5 400 and some expired Acfa Optima 100. When using a waist level finder, you'll generally be shooting from a lower angle. This can show in the images but at the same time, it makes the shooting experience feel less intrusive when you're out on the street. Also, an old TLR imposes a less threatening feeling, and I tend to notice more people interested in the camera or even in starting a conversation about it. I ran into a friend and took his portrait and another of a fashionable stranger. This was at around f5.6, and you can see how the depth of field is still shallow, as well as the great rendering from the 75 mm lens. I personally think that the f3.5 is the way to go, and it's hard to justify the price difference for a Rolly Flex 2.8. Okay, let's talk about some pros and cons of this system. I believe this particular camera is a 3.5e. This one doesn't have a light meter. Despite its age, the Xenotar lens on this camera performs beautifully, and the resulting images have nice character. You can expect great lens performance from any Rolly Flex. You will be forced to shoot a bit slower with this or any TLR, especially out on the street, but you can increase your proficiency the more that you use one. And the Rolly Flex also has a great aid for scale focusing. It's easily one of the best medium format options out there for general photography, but you need to be okay with a few restrictions. The waist level finder can be hard to compose with due to the reversed image, but you can get used to this with time. Squares are also not for everyone, so you have to be okay with that or with intending to crop your images after. The lenses are fixed and the maximum shutter speed might be restrictive for some. Other cons could include the age and relative price of a Rolly Flex. You will ideally want a serviced or CLA copy. And depending on the version and condition, I would consider them relatively expensive compared to other TLR cameras. But looking at some of the sample images, it would be really hard to guess that they came from such an old camera. The sharpness, detail, color, and character are all there. The Rolly Flex is a joy to use in terms of feel and ergonomics. So how does it compare to something like my Yashica Flex? I bought this on eBay a couple of years back for much less than the price of a Rolly Flex. It has an 80mm lens instead of the 75, but it's also an f3.5 max aperture. It seems to be very much inspired by the Rolly Flex, making it a good alternative and comparison point for this video. Overall, they feel very similar to use. One main difference is the position of the focusing knob being on the right hand side with the Yashica Flex as opposed to the left hand side with the Rolly. I had gotten used to focusing with my right hand so it took me some time to adjust to the Rolly Flex. 
I ever so slightly prefer the right hand position of this camera since I don't tend to find myself focusing and firing the shutter simultaneously with a TLR. Also, this particular Yashica required manual cocking of the shutter with a separate winding mechanism. The Rolly Flex, on the other hand, has the more convenient combined system with the large crank on the right hand side. I prefer the meter markings instead of feet on the Yashica Flex, but the threaded shutter release of the Rolly Flex. However, all these subtle differences actually vary from model to model, so you'll be likely able to find a variation of either camera with the features that you want. More importantly, I compared the output, which is where most of the difference lies. The Rolly Flex does have a nicer overall performance from the lens, with more micro contrast and so-called 3D pop. It does outdo the Yashica Flex that I have, especially at the wider apertures. But once stopped down a bit, there is not as much of a difference in terms of quality. And even the basic Yashica model I have offers a beautiful rendering from the lens with comparable sharpness into the corners. So I think if you plan to shoot wide open a lot, you will generally get better quality from the lenses on the Rolly Flex. Would I say it's worth the price difference though for the German camera? Not really, but if you want the best of the best and can afford it, then why not? Also, there may be certain factors that steer you towards a Rolly, like the range or availability of accessories. It's still well worth it if you can find the model that fits your needs within your budget. And that's the great thing about these Rolly Flex cameras. There's so many variations. You can get some with a light meter, the different lenses, the different little variations that I've mentioned. So it does give you more options when you're trying to find the perfect camera. I dropped in to check out a new lab in Melbourne called Irahas, where I got to know some of the staff and took a couple of portraits. I developed and scanned the HB5 myself using my usual methods, but Irahas kindly offered to dev and scan the C41 rolls to trial their service and help give them some feedback as they had just opened. It was cool to see some Rolly Flex and other cameras on display, and I'm looking forward to see their growth and the new services they'll be offering next year. During my time shooting with the camera, I could see the appeal and felt a greater appreciation for this legendary machine. There's a reason why it was copied so much and I could feel the sense of refinement. Even little things like the focusing scale and film reminder just added to that usage experience significantly. And I can also understand why people would be willing to pay the difference for the output from a Rolly Flex lens. I'm glad I got to try one and could see myself owning one sometime down the track. I feel like every film photographer would have a great time at least trying one of these at some point and experiencing it for themselves. Personally, I love mechanical cameras and the meditative experience of shooting with something like this. It's an experience you can only have through film photography, so I highly recommend it. All right, so thanks to Nick for letting me borrow the camera and try it for a little bit. It's gonna be heading back to him soon. Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried a Rolly Flex, if you own one, which variation and why did you go for that? What makes it special to you? Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you on the next video here on Pushing Film.